Scent of a Woman, Thoughts. I like that, in spite of the fact that there are no you know, big roles for women in the film, and in spite of Frank's interest in them, they're never shown in an exploitive kind of way, and Frank is respectful towards him, except for the ones he's related to. You'll notice that we hear of the escort, and we know what transpires, of course, but we don't actually see any of it. We don't even hear a description. You know, it's not like Frank comes out and says, man, you should have seen her, you know. And with with Donna, for example, perfectly named character, yeah, he for, he fulfills a need in her. She she wants to tango, you know, but well, her boyfriend not currently, you know, but she she clearly has fun, you know. Look at her eyes as she's being dragged off by Michael, and that segues me nicely into the details. We know that Michael is lying. We know that he's... That there isn't some other couple for them to meet somewhere else. Carol and Daryl, you know, and it's just repeated once by Frank, and that's all we need, you know. Ah, that was a lie. That was... that. Th those were the first two names he came up with, you know. They rhyme. They're practically the same name. It was, he just saw his girlfriend with two other guys, and he figured out some story, you know, and that was just the first thing he came up with. Little details like that. Yeah, this, this was back when Hollywood believed that its audience could actually think for itself, that we could put two and two together. We didn't need everything explained. And, you know, thus the film really manages to have a lot of detail to it. We really feel like we get to know these characters. From a pretty short scene with Frank interacting with his family, some family that he hasn't seen for some time, we understand their dynamic, we get what what it's like for family to be around Frank, you know. With very little screen time at all for Philip Seymour Hoffman, we get what the relationship between George and Chaz is. I'm not even sure we had heard the names of the two others. We knew we knew Harry's name. But when George, in that final scene, finally caves and, you know, says all three names, we know that the other two names are the names of the two others. Because that's him, you know. He's sitting there with his father's su substantial financial support behind him, and he still caves. You know, there's... You know, and, and then he does pass it on to Charlie, you know, he's like, oh, well, Charlie probably saw it better, why don't you ask him, you know. Excuse me. He's, he's practically the definition of a snitch. He's weak, you know. He's got all this power right behind him, right at his side. But, he, you know, you, you get the feeling that if George wasn't held up by others, you know, if he wasn't at this prestigious school, if he didn't get everything from Daddy, you know, born with a silver spoon in his mouth, he just crumbled. There's nothing there, you know. All he ever seems excited about is just having fun. The one time the prospect of a test is brought into question, he says that he needs to you know, he's gonna study up on it the night before, you know. And it's not really mentioned outright that Charlie is a good student, but 
we can tell, you know, he, he did deserve the grant to Harvard, you know. He's a good student, he works hard, that's why he's at Baird in the first place, that's why he's not, you know, in the suburb, suburb of Oregon. That's, you know, he got there by working hard, not just looking towards the stars, but reaching for them, you know. And I suppose that more or less is everything.